guys, what's up? It's Sean Autotopia LA. And today I've got the guys from Vintage Motor Works back. We showed a car of theirs, their Jag last week. Um, today we're getting into something completely different from these guys. Now if you remember, this is a father and son team. Um, so today we're shooting their 67 Dodge Dart. And besides the color being extraordinarily cool, um, one of the things I just absolutely love from the get-go with this car is that Nico, the son, bought this car when he was 15 years old and him and his dad built this together. This was their first project together and they built it mostly with parts that they had in their garage already. Which is just cool, right? And they've done some really neat things on it. You'll find imperfections if you're looking, you'll find them. But they did some really neat stuff. I mean, for one, it's got a Jag type rear end, makes sense, right? With dual coil over suspension on the rear. And uh, truth is, I don't know a lot more about this car. You, we're gonna learn this together, what they did to build this car into what we're seeing here. So we'll do our usual thing, man. We'll do a walkthrough of the details and we are definitely gonna go for a drive. And I'm genuinely excited about this, man. I think this car is just bitching and I love the Vintage Motor Works guys, so we're just gonna have some fun, go drive and learn about their Dodge Dart. You guys ready for this? Because here we go. Fire this baby up. episode uh, with Nico and his dad have a company called Vintage Motor Works. So you guys check this out. Nico bought this car when he was 15 years old. Um, his dad being a lifelong car builder um, and definitely a hot rod guy. They built this as Nico's first car, right? Yeah, yeah, this was pretty much the first car I ever bought. Um, and uh, didn't really get to finish it as my own car, but I still drive it a lot. Um, customer's really cool about it, and he always lets me take it out, you know? And it's awesome. So, 67 Dodge Dart. Yeah, started life as a 67 Dodge Dart convertible. Um, was it decent condition when you bought it? Or? Uh, it was, it wasn't, no, it wasn't that great. Uh, rusty floors, um, that was the main issue. It was a slant six car, so um, yanked that, all that stuff out, and um, had an 86 Maserati Quattroporte sitting around the shop that was just a junker. Right. And uh, we were pretty much gonna just, you know, toss the car. So my dad had the idea of integrating the front and rear suspensions on a 67 Dart. And uh, that's exactly what so we did. So the suspension on this car came from an a 86 Quattroporte? Maserati Quattroporte, yeah. Wow. So, uh, that's one that you're not going to see on another car. No, and the funny thing is Maserati didn't use any of their own stuff. So the front end was a Ferrari based front end and the rear right. end was based off of a Jag rear end. Right. So essentially this car's got a, you know, Ferrari style front suspension and a Jag rear end. What's the motor? It's a 440. You it's said? a 440. Yeah, it's a 440. It's got Ross racing pistons in it, six pack rods, uh, port and polish heads, bigger intake and exhaust valves. And uh, we have an ISKI cam in it. Um, two four barrel carburetors, which are beautiful by the way. Yeah, and the thing that really makes it go now is that six speed automatic trans. Right. Really puts all the power down. What, uh, speaking of power, what, what kind of power does the car make? It's making around 600 horse. We're running a, a mix between 9100 octane. So we, uh, we're about, you know, 96, 97 octane on the things. So we have a high compression. So you mix 91 and? And 100 octane. Got it, okay. So you're making around 600 horsepower. What's the torque on it? Uh, it's around 580, 600 foot pounds of torque as well. Nice. I'll start. Nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right away, I'm just in love. The color on this thing, dude. What's the name of this color? It's Grabber Blue. So it's It a, is Grabber Blue. It's okay. a Ford color. Yeah. Oh, all the Mopar guys must hate that. Oh yeah. 
All right, so you got 440 making around 600 horsepower, yeah. two four barrel carbs. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's camped. Yeah, yeah, it's got a real heavy cam in it. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much where 90% of the output of the power comes from, is having those, you know, that big cam. Right. One of the things that caught my eye right away is we have a car in the shop, that 70 Cuda, that has a similar rear end, uh -huh. which is a Jag. Is it actually from a Jag or is it? Uh, no, it's not. This one is not from a Jag. This one's from a Maserati, but. Oh, it is the Maserati yeah. rear. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> This thing pulls good, man. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Nico and his dad built this car, but they sold it. Um, so you gotta just love it that you oh, still yeah. get to drive Yeah, your he's car. super cool. I, I mean, I don't drive it often, but uh, if there's a car show, I'll call him up and say, hey, can I run the car down to the car show? And he'll either come with me and let me drive, or I'll just, he'll just say, hey, here's the keys, go have fun, bring it back. That's great, man. That's a cool owner. So to, he's super to... cool. So most of this car, you're, you're saying like, like it was from stuff like the Quattroporte. You have yeah. a Junker Quattroporte that has some good parts on it. So you grab this, you grab that, and... Yeah, I mean like the certain things like as far as interior wise, the center console is uh, custom made out of aluminum. We built this whole center console. This, this is all aluminum under the leather. Yeah, this is all aluminum under the leather. Um, this armrest is out of a 73 E-Type. Um, <laughs> the handbrake, which is on the left side, is out of a 911 Porsche, uh, 80s Carrera, Momo steering wheel, the starter switch, the starter buttons out of a Jaguar starter switch. Dude, I love it. It's a true, total Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. It's like, a, grab this, grab that. We were actually thinking about painting car. the car lime green. Eventually, I elected to go with grabber blue. So the other thing that's catching me right away is as I'm resting my hand here, this is a fully caged car. Like, I, yeah. it, it goes through the whole car. Yeah, the cage runs from the dash. There's bars that go underneath the dash, through the firewall, to the front side of the frame. And then same thing goes to the back. The bars go all the way back to the rear side of the frame. So it's fully caged. So you got, I mean, because convertibles always freak me out because you lose so you lose much structure and, and you know? flex. Yeah, this car does not have any flex at all, really. Right. It's pretty tight. Over here, we put padding, you know, so if you do hit your head, you got some padding. And it's I all, noticed that. It's I all like baseball that. style stitched. What do you have for brakes on here? Um, so we have four piston brakes in the front that were off of the Maserati Quattroporte, and you got inboard braking in the back, which are two piston calibers and thick ventilated rotors. So braking is great. We've got a hydro boost set up on it. Right. To compensate for the big cam, not having vacuum, so we're running the hydro boost style. So braking is actually really good. This car stops on a dime. I love that you got rid of the back seat. Yeah, yeah we built this back uh, little, you know, back seat delete. Our uh, sound system is in there, our battery is in there. All the controllers for the transmission, because it's electronic control trans, it's all back and then there. You you pop the strap and yeah, it lifts up. Yeah, the strap and it just folds up right Nice. The Being a guy that's not a builder, I'm not a designer, I'm not a mechanic, I'm just an enthusiast. So yeah. I appreciate the artistry and the, the choices that you make as you're building a car. You right. know, I, I, I really appreciate that. Dude, this thing's just <laughs> great. So what's the trans again, you said? It's a TCI six-speed. TCI, uh, It's that's kind of it. a new trans they started building, custom bell housing to make it all work, based off of your 4L ADE, um, but it's got six forward gears. So uh, it- So it, if you want, you can manually shift one through yeah, six? Yeah, I can, I can, well, not with this shifter. See, I wanted to do that, but I wanted to actually put paddle shift on this thing. Oh, Because you wow. can put paddle shifters on with this trans. Right. So, uh, but the client didn't want paddle shifters and he was happy with just having leaving the shifter alone and using the you can control one through three manually got it and then four five and six uh once you shift out a third it'll control on its own got it and it'll electronically downshift and whatnot is that a yeah. b&m yeah it's a b&m quick yeah. shift if a customer came to you with a 67 dodge dart and it had a six cylinder motor in it uh -huh. And it was kind of beat like this one was when you got it. And he yeah. said, dude, that one that you guys did in Grabber Blue, I want to do that exact same car. I want the auto meter gauges. I want the Momo wheel. Yeah. 
I want it exactly as this car is. What would you say the cost would have been to build this car? Not including going and buying your donor car. It would be, you know, between one to 150, something right. like this, um, with the 440 and this trans and doing right. an independent rear suspension, independent front. Right. Um, that would be, I, I think that would be a strong estimate, you know, one yeah. to 150. I think a lot of people that follow the world of custom cars, but they're not deep enough into it to, to really understand that yeah. even a more, and don't take offense when I say a more simple build, but, yeah, a, but a more is, yeah. simple build like this Absolutely. car, the, the dollars still add up because I got to guess a lot of it is just, just simply the time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's labor. I mean, people, people always, when they're building a car, you know, they just look at the big amounts of money they spend say, you know, I'm going to spend 10 grand on an engine and say, you know, five to six grand on brakes, and then another three to four grand on transmission, which this transmission does not cost three to four grand, it's actually $8,000. The transmission, the transmission, the transmission is eight yeah, grand. it's eight grand. And uh, people just look at those big numbers, like, okay, I buy that, I buy that, I buy that. Well, who's gonna put all that shit together? Right. You obviously gotta go to somebody who knows how to do it. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, people think that builders, they assume that, you know, we work cheap and it's it's not a cheap thing to do. It takes talent no. and it takes time and it's a, it's an ongoing process. So a lot of it's labor. You know, yeah. this, this job is very labor intensive. I just think this is a super cool build. Well, hell yes, that was fun, right? Does this car not just kind of kick ass? Especially, the thing I love, love, love about this is this is a father and son team that built this car. I mean, think about it. This kid was 15 years old when he bought this car and him and his dad put it together. I mean, my dad's cool, but I mean, come on, dude. Like, this is just a blast. We got some good burnout shots for you. And I'm just, I'm thoroughly blown away by this car, especially you know, nowadays we see so many cars that are half million, million dollar builds. This one, in comparison, is actually a low dollar build. I would say, you know, based on how it was done, we're gonna put it in the hundred to $150,000 range, somewhere around there. I know some of you guys are gonna tell me you could do this car for 3,500 bucks. Show me. Um, but anyways, man, as always, you guys, I love showing you the world of custom cars. I love what these guys do, builders, to me are artists and they're great artists. And I love, I love what these guys do. I'm becoming a huge fan of the Vintage Motor Works guys, not to mention they're just cool people. So uh, that's it for today, man. As always, I gotta say thanks for hanging, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. I would say we just passed 14,000 subscribers, but by the time this comes out, there'll probably be more. So thanks a lot for hanging, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, and I will see you guys in the next episode. All right, man, later.